I've been lucky to travel countries all across the globe, and here's one short story from each of the countries I've been to. Pee-woo! I went to Jamaica in high school with my brother Alex, my best friend Alex, who I call my brother. And we ended up getting stuck in Jamaica because of a category four hurricane. And at night, the nightclub was still open. So me and Alex were breakdancing. I don't understand why I thought I could breakdance, but somehow the staff was so friendly and inviting that I was like, all right, I'm gonna breakdance. Junior year of high school, I went to Mexico with my family immediately after I recovered from mono. But my mono journey wasn't simple. I actually took antibiotics thinking I had a strep infection. Therefore, I broke out in a morbilliform rash. My whole body was in a rash and I went to Mexico on vacation meeting new people, skinny, lost 20 pounds with this rash on me. Everyone nicknamed me Sick Boy. Not many people know this, but I actually flew to China, specifically Shanghai, for 36 hours, two days, to film a water bottle commercial. I literally had to speak Mandarin. It was pretty amazing. I learned a few words, had a good time. There was like 80 people on set. I've never shot a professional commercial before. Check off that box. Me and my girlfriend in college went to the Dominican Republic. We were at the nightclub, we were kind of getting bored, so we decided to leave. We went onto the beach where we saw an inflatable floating trampoline, and we thought we'd swim out to it, get romantic, you know what I'm saying? Get to the trampoline, club closes, everyone runs out onto the beach, people start thinking that my girlfriend is someone else, and you hear girls on the beach screaming, Rebecca, get off of the trampoline! You shouldn't be with that guy! My girlfriend literally started crying. I had to swim back to shore get the clothing, worst moment of my life. When I was younger, I went to Aruba. Beautiful country, nothing really happened. <laughs> when I went to Colombia and we went on a boat, there was actual fishermen that swam up to your boat with fresh seafood. I'm talking clams, maybe not clams, oysters, langoustines. Do you know what a langoustine is? Mm, I love seafood. I did Costa Rica New Year going in from 2018 to 2019, and I saw so much of the country. Luckily, I have some amazing friends there that took me around. I actually made a best friend. His name is Joe the Giraffe. Check him out. I actually got paid when I had my little viral moment of fame in 2015 to go out to Switzerland to Zurich for my birthday and make a nightclub appearance. The nightclub was called Jade. I had a phenomenal time. I took like 300 photos. Here's a rapid fire. The source of my one and only, well maybe not one and only, but my most likely to have died experience. We were on a boat, leaving Bimini, the worst storm hits us. I'm on a small 28 foot boat, it's getting eaten alive by the waves. I'm literally reading the instructions on the boat to see what we do if, in case the boat like flips over. So I was panicking. The driver of the boat literally was trying to wipe his eyes while driving the boat and wiping the thing. Actually, now that I think about it, that might've been near the Bermuda Triangle. Went to the UK for only 48 hours to host a five hour live telethon for Stand Up To Cancer, where actually testicles dropped from the ceiling. Oh, and uh, do you know who Boy George is? Check him out. So remember when I said I went to Switzerland for a nightclub appearance? Well, when we landed there two days early, we actually took a train over, an overnight train to Hungary, where we went to this spa that had a natural geyser in it that actually kept the water warm. It was a very unique experience and I recommend it for everybody. Also, some of the local press realized that I was there and I told some med students that I was coming to a local cafe, which turned into a total disaster because hundreds of people showed up, including their nationwide media. What? Been to Monaco a couple times, one time for the Grand Prix, must, must, must go if you've never done it before. And the second time was for my TED talk, which I actually wrote on the plane going to Monaco. There was a person sitting next to me on the plane who was a botanist and he's like, what are you writing? I'm like, oh, my TED talk. And he said, oh, you're gonna do a great job because you're actually planning your speech. Meanwhile, I'm thinking I'm about to land and do the one minute rehearsal in the next five hours. Whoops. How did it go? You tell me, two million views, link down below. So you know how I just said I was in Monaco for the Grand Prix? Well, first I landed in Nice, which is the French Riviera, mm, beautiful. And then we actually took a helicopter over to Monaco. So I was technically in France, got some lunch, wow. I was born in Russia, so you could say I've been to Russia. Do I remember much? Not really. I have a cool story about when I started hustling in my old neighborhood as a five-year-old selling pears to my friends with a upcharge and my dad got really mad at me, made me bring the pears back to everybody and give them rebates. Pear coin. <laughs> Air coin. Went to Austria when I was visiting Eastern Europe and I vividly remember walking in the main square where they had all this beautiful architecture. And it wasn't even that late at night, it was like 11 p.m. and it was dead silent. You could hear each one of my footsteps. I've never experienced something like that, probably because New York never sleeps. And I remember I went to a nightclub and it was like a disco 80s 
United States throwback. And it was playing all American music. And there was all these Austrian people dancing to it. I definitely didn't fit in. It was not my vibe. Anguilla, Anguilla, I don't know the correct way to say it, but I went there on a vacation, went there with my buddy, decided to think I was really strong because I was deadlifting a lot of weight, tried to pick him up, throw him in the pool. Instead, threw my back out the most painful back pain I've ever experienced in my life. Couldn't breathe without pain. I couldn't even get up off the floor. I had to sit with the sweater wrapped tightly around my waist in order for me to just not cry out in pain. And I needed to leave the following day on a boat because I needed to ferry over to the airport. And I couldn't do it without some pain control. So we actually went to the local pharmacy, explained that I was a doctor, that I needed just one prescription pain medication to help me through this boat ride. That, I think that's the only time I've ever taken a prescription pain medication. But this back pain? Wow. I've been to Israel a couple of times. Birthright, I actually sa saved someone's life on a plane going to Israel. But the memorable story I have from Israel is when we were at the Red Sea. We were there with a group of friends and there was a gentleman there playing soccer. So I joined him because I love playing soccer and he was very welcoming. As he continued to be friendly and welcoming, I realized he was starting to take picture of the girls in our group and sending them to somebody, inviting us out with him. I explained that we needed to take our guard with us because that was the policy. He said, don't worry about it. We have our own weapons. You don't need guards. The more and more I talked to him, the more and more I realized I was in like a, a Taken movie. This guy was literally trying to size us up and convincing me to go out with him and bring the girls. Like that was his thing, bring this girl, bring this girl. And it was the most awkward experience. And the only way that I could find out of it was to lie about where we were staying and also feign enthusiasm and say that I really wanted to go out and that it's definitely happening. And thankfully nothing happened. I went to the Czech Republic with my sister and I vividly remember going to see that giant clock in their main square. That was really cool. I went to the Prada store, bought my girlfriend a Prada bag. My sister was disapproving of that. Also fun fact, I tried to buy a water bottle. Apparently water was more expensive than beer. Who knew? Had a layover, Dusseldorf. Great food in the airport. Beautiful design of the airport. That's about it. I went to Turks and Caicos not too long ago when I was coming out of a really dark time in my life. And actually all the people that went on the trip with me were also going through a transition moment or actually have overcome something quite serious. So while normally I like to take trips and do a lot of stuff, we kind of just stayed low key and really didn't do much because we all needed some mental clearance for our headspace. And admitting sometimes that you need that is a really important step. I definitely don't take enough vacations and time off from work, but that was one time that I desperately, desperately needed those five days. Oh, and I also saw Jojo the dolphin swimming right by our boat. By the way, I think Jojo is kind of fake and made up. Something they tell the tourists, oh look, there's Jojo. They like to think it's always the same dolphin. It's definitely not the same dolphin, but I like to buy into it. Jojo's a cute name. I actually flew to Portugal because I was dating someone who happened to be a professional tennis player and was training out there. But Portugal also happens to be the first place I ever had a tennis lesson. And now I'm actually somewhat decent at tennis. You wanna play singles or you wanna play doubles? Went to Canada a bunch of times, went to the Canadian Grand Prix in Montreal. I actually had the best massage of my life in Montreal. Oh, and I also was on the show E-Talk if you're familiar with it. Panama. I actually went there with my entire family because my father tried to make some investments there that never really came to fruition. I got to witness the Panama Canal, which is pretty cool learning about it and then seeing it in person. The technology there, underrated. Look up the locks that they got in the Panama Canal. International airspace. Literally flying a Delta flight from the United States to Tel Aviv. Bam, of the day, Dr. Mike. Passenger went into anaphylactic shock. In the air, doesn't have an EpiPen. I had to MacGyver one with the tools on board. We inject him, we save his life with a giant needle, by the way, not the cute EpiPen needle that most of you guys have seen before. We get EpiPens on planes because I partnered up with Chuck Schumer. This is like a win-win-win story straight out of Grey's Anatomy. El Salvador was not that long ago. I went there on a medical mission at the tail end of my medical residency, and it was a unique experience. Someone had found out that I actually traveled to El Salvador, and I saw a Facebook post that literally translated to, he's there, go get him, with like a little wink emoji. And I wasn't sure if that message was tailored for the girls or for me to potentially get kidnapped. I met amazing people, but I was very scared. They actually sent in the National Guard to guard my hotel, and it was a once in a lifetime experience on that end. We also were able to help a lot of people in the AmeriCare's clinic that I went and volunteered at, that experience will forever be remembered. In fact, most underrated, most underviewed video on this channel is my El Salvador medical mission video. Click here to check that out. And as always, stay happy and healthy.